Imagine you're waking up in your bed and you smell freshly brewed coffee. You go downstairs, grab a cup, and you taste sips of that delicious warm liquid. That is you enjoying your morning coffee. And then you go to work, and there's this colleague at the coffee machine, and he needs his coffee. He tells you about his headache, that he needs his coffee to get through the day. Otherwise, the, the fog in his head is taking away his focus. So he needs this coffee to function, and he takes another cup of coffee. And that is addiction. And addiction is a mental disorder, and this is often not recognized. People just say, well, he's drinking too much. But how does addiction work? In the early days, people would say, well, those people are just amoral. And later on, people would say the substance is addictive. But nowadays we know it's a brain disease. And it's not about pleasure. It's about dealing with negative effects to keep functioning. So I talked with a patient in our addiction care clinic, and he told me he didn't enjoy the drinks. He didn't like the taste of the alcohol he was drinking. And typically he would stay in bed all day until he had to drink again. So addiction is not about pleasure. People feel that they need this substance to function. Without this substance, they may start trembling or freeze with anxiety. Addiction is not about pleasure. It's about a constant battle with these negative effects to function. So would you do something about it? And would you break this cycle of addiction? This is very difficult. Because if you stop using, you will experience withdrawal effects. And those withdrawal effects could be a headache, like the colleague we talked about, but could also be much, much worse. People could have epileptic seizures leading to death. So that's why, traditionally, these patients are admitted to an addiction care clinic. There are nurses and doctors to take measurements and give medication if needed. But in this case, someone is taken from his daily life and taken out of his trusted environment into a clinic with strangers. And in this clinic, there are no substances. So it's easy to stop using because, yeah, there is nothing. And a patient told me that, yeah, detoxing in the clinic is easy because, yeah, if there is nothing, you can just stop. There is nothing. But what then if you go, come home and you are alone again? Then what? And detox clinics are associated with a lot of stigma. Would you tell your colleague, your boss, that you need a two-week leave because uh, you need to go for addiction care treatment? You need to go for detox? Would you tell them? And what if you have a, a dog who will take care of your pet? Or even we will take care of your child. So 
there are 30,000 people in an addiction care clinic in the Netherlands. But there's a still a fraction of the people suffering from addiction. These addiction care clinics are very safe space. But they have a serious problem with accessibility. So, what if? What if you could detox from home? Not as a patient in the clinic, but as the person you are. And there are some outpatient detoxification programs, but they are very limited. Because on the one hand, you have these nurses who have to drive hours a day to try to visit everybody. And they're complaining that this is not scalable, they need something more efficient. And on the other hand, you have the patients they're talking about, okay, how am I going to do this on my own? How am I going to comply with my detoxification process? And do I have the strong social support I need? So, outpatient detoxification is much more accessible than a clinic, but it has serious challenges for efficiency and for support. So, why? Why don't we use technology for this? We are used to technology in our daily lives. We are using computers, tablets, activity trackers. It even has created new addictions, like the endless scrolling on social media. So why aren't we using this technology? Is it because this technology isn't there? Are we not willing to use it? Or is this technology too difficult? I think that we just don't know how to implement this technology in a feasible way. Because I learned that we should not try to replace all the human connections in the addiction care. I had an interview with a patient and he told me that those human connections are the most important thing to feel supported and to comply to his detoxification. But instead, we should use technology in the moments that those caregivers can't be there. So, for example, this nurse who was driving around to hand out medication, yeah, she cannot give a bag of pills to this patient because those pills are also addictive, so maybe not a good idea. But what if, instead of driving around, there would be a device that could give medication in the right dosage at the right times? So that's a medication dispenser. And those devices already exist. And maybe we can also monitor people with technology. And we could place cameras all over their home, like here in the room, there are one, two, three cameras. But then if you visit someone who is detoxing, would you like the idea that everything is recorded? Every cup of coffee you drink, or maybe every beer? Would that be a problem? Yeah, and there exist also these ankle bracelets you can wear around your ankle, but stigma-wise, that might not be the best idea. So, why don't we monitor people with smartwatches? And then people can even detox discreetly without the others knowing. Or maybe you want to involve others. And maybe technology can also help with that. But then we have to make sure that those people that are supporting you are really supporting you and not pushing you into use again. And talking about contact, technology can make having contact with your practitioner 
a lot easier. You could just take out your phone, start a video call, and talk with him or her. You don't need to go to the clinic, it's just in the palm of your hands. But how do we make sure that patients don't turn off their phone, their screen, and put it away? And, and talking about screens, if you see your patient only via a screen, and this monitoring gives you a lot of numbers, how do we make sure that people aren't reduced to a set of numbers on a screen? I think we should use all this data to personalize the detox process, to focus on patients, to treat them as the persons they are. So, Starting a detoxification process is a very brave step and it's a very difficult process. And instead of taking away people from their daily lives and putting people in places with a lot of stigma, I believe that technology can make outpatient detoxification more safe, more efficient, and more accessible. And maybe in the future, this detox at home will become the coolest treatment in addiction care. Thank you. <laughs>